audience. Love line may contain sexually oriented content. Content. Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love line, love line. Coast to coast. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician. Addiction medicine specialist. Okay. Now, where's my carpet? My pad. Drew's uh, carpet remnant that I've been trying to get him to use for no, which I've been using seven years. You were trying to get me to arrange. Once it was arranged, I was using. Now, listen. See how crazy this noise is? Just moving stuff around like I always do. Somebody uh, stole Drew's carpet remnant. You're the one that's from go his crazy. desk. Hey, oh, any, any don't here? look around. You guys, anything? The carpet piece? Oh, no. No oh, luck. Oh, who needs it? The true. Can you set your goddamn cup on the corner of my piece of carpet here, which is eight inches in front of your microphone, for Christ's sake? I'm, good. <laughs> I, I'm not aware of this stuff. I, I'm thinking of other things, big guy. I'm, I'm sure it won't happen. I want to. I want to other things. Keep you happy. I don't want you to be. Is that it over there against the wall? Uh, Drew's carpet remnant has been found. Everybody. Here's the deal. I, and it really, um, it's a bad design, but over here at the studio, we have a console, and the console is, uh, has oak around it, has a nice piece of uh, laminate, possibly for mica, yeah. on the top. And uh, whenever you set anything down on it, such as a mic stand or a coffee mug or a pen or something, it makes a clink sound. Drew always drives me nuts clanking his uh, coffee mug down on it, because as you know, I'm all about good radio. Oh, yeah. Thank <clears throat> you. There we go. So there you go. Strong Drew got his carpet remnant back, and he can uh, clank away. Oh, man. I'll tell you, I was traumatized when I got home last night. Uh-oh. I uh, had a long day yesterday. Left the house about, about 9, 10, 9, 15 in the morning, and I uh, came home about 12.30 last night after the show. So it had been a pretty long day. Uh -huh. And uh, no sooner did I plop my ass down on the sofa. I have a ritual of... Uh, drinking red wine and watching TiVo for about an hour and 20 minutes before I uh, go upstairs and go to bed. And uh, heard a little scratching, a little noise, a little this, a little that. Uh, opened the uh, basement door. Giant rat. Oh. <laughs> Giant rat. And, and to me... And you're by yourself. You're by yourself. The whole house is dark. Yeah. And the basement's lit up. You got the shoes off. You know what I mean? <laughs> Did you you've, those, you've already had a glass of wine. Did you get one of those 1960s housewife with apron kind of jumping back onto a chair or something? I did step on the ottoman to uh, get yeah. back onto the sofa on the way back to the sofa. And it's like, I'm barefoot. I'm in my underpants. I got a glass of red wine in me. I've had a 16-hour day. Uh. The rat turns around and starts making its way down the stairs into the bowels of the basement. Yeah. And I'm like, Ugh. You now, know, what am I going to do? It's, it's, it's you know, 10 to 1. You're going to get a cat. You're going to shut the door. You're going to go to the vet, the, the pound the next day and get a cat. That, that, that's what I should do. Yeah. Is it, was, will the cat work? The cat will work. Cat no on, problem. Oh, cats. You know what I, cats do? They, they really, they don't stay at your house. They patrol. Yeah. They're on constant patrol, right? Yeah, constant. Except, except when they're sleeping, which is which about 22 about hours. 20, 22, <laughs> 23 hours a day. But that 45 minutes, they're up and about they're not patrol. eating patrol. or sleeping. They're on or patrol. Or trapping or peeing. They'll, they'll pee all over the place, too. So the rat headed down the stairs, and I thought, well, I could go after it. I thought, where's my BB gun? <laughs> that was my first thought. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. That's like a 12-year-old boy reaction. Well, I don't have a shotgun. I just right. got, I got a BB gun, you know. I got a pellet gun. It's a, it's a, a pellet gun is no BB gun. It's a man's He's BB gun. Yeah, yeah. All right. I got the pellet gun. I thought, well, I'll go after it with the pellet gun. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll go out after it with like a sprinkler key or mop or something. And then I thought, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to go down there. The thing's going to get in the corner. It's going to go behind. It's going to go into the washing machine. You know, a little open panel on the backside. It's going to somehow get into something, and I'm just going to go nuts. Yeah. And I'm going to be freaking out. And then what do I do if I catch up to it? I, I kill it with a broom? No, yeah. you, you, you just let it go. The thing is big. Yeah, you let it go. It's a good size. I mean, it was a big one. It was like novelty size. Yeah. You know, it wasn't, you know, people go, oh, there's a rat, a and mouse, Adam, or whatever. And here's the reality. Novelty size. You've been cohabitating with that rat for a long time. No, no. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. No, I know How what you're saying. How do you think saying. he got so huge? I, I, I got so huge. Living in your house. <laughs> He's been eating my hair while I'm asleep. That's how he got so big, according to Drew. He's been visiting your hamper. Lots of protein. No, how dare you. 
even a rat's not low enough to visit my hamper. So, I, you know what I decided? I'd put some poison out because I'd heard him earlier yeah. in the week, right. and I'd, I'd rationalize. He's going to He's ate the poison. He's, he's clinging to life, and I'm going to let him just die dignified death in the basement while I go upstairs, finish watching the TV, beat off, go to bed, and I'll just come collect this corpse uh, tomorrow morning and uh, probably give him a burial at sea. Oh, yeah. And I came down there this morning, flashlight in hand, Wearing the uh, wearing the shoes and the underpants, but wearing the wearing the boots, you know, looking for some protection because they'll lunge. Oh, oh sure. yeah, oh, once Wilbur, you corner yeah, a rat, sure. they'll lunge, and uh, couldn't find it anywhere. But he left a few droppings. No right. droppings, right. no droppings, and no sign of the rat, the huge rat. So now, of course, it's somewhere. <laughs> Fine. By the way, the no and by the way, and let me say this too about uh, you goddamn nocturnal creatures, if you're listening. They never make any noise during the day. Never a sound during the day. And I'm home then at night. I'm home from like 7, 7.30 to 9.30, just sitting watching TV. Never a peep. Never anything. The only time the gnawing, the scratching, the sounds, it, oh, it's 1 a.m. It's yeah. 1 a.m. that starts. And it's like, it's, it's just enough to let me get settled in and then unsettle me and then send me to bed so I can dream about rats. Let's be that's serious. It, that's that's I wouldn't care if it did it at 3.30 in the morning. I wouldn't care, but it's right. It's like 12.45, 1 o'clock. Let's be clear about something else. Big rats like that don't live alone. Oh. No way. You're saying there's blacks with them. <laughs> What you hey, saying? listen, I told you about me and my bobcat experience on Sunday No, but night. that's nothing. This I is a rat. About, I was in the backyard with a kitchen knife and a bat yeah, chasing uh, a bobcat. Uh, they, but bobcats are like, yeah. they put them in Disney movies. They're friendly. Oh, this is can't. a beast. This is this is a formidable Adam, animal. The thing that attacked our cat. Your bobcat is outside. It's not in your house. What if there's a bobcat in your house? My wife was outside shrieking at the time, too. Your wife's a lot more dangerous than that bobcat will ever be. Believe you me. It'd be a good match. Bobcat probably would have done a better job on my European trip. Oh, Jennifer, did you want her to? Uh, no, no, it's a, no. I'm, I'm handling. I got, a, I got it under control. She asked me that tonight. I didn't know what answer. Uh, under control. Yeah. Under control. Jennifer. Yes. You're 16. Yeah. How are you guys doing? Where are you in San Jose? Yeah. I'm gonna need to sleep over at your place tonight. Okay. All right. Tell your yeah. folks. Tell I got a rat okay. in my house. I can't go. Okay. Home. I can't go. <laughs> so, um, yeah, my question is, um, well, I took a sh the shower with my boyfriend, and um, like we decided to, you know, have anal sex. <laughs> I don't know how what, that came along. What was that again? We're anal gonna have sex? anal sex. What? What do you call again? Butt sex. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Okay. So, like, okay. We yeah. decided. So he put it in. How, how, did, how did you come to that negotiation? How did those, those negotiations <laughs> conclude it? Hmm. The, so seal, goes, the, the seal put on the page and signed. <laughs> he goes, well, let's try something different. Like, yeah. you know? Right. Yeah. Change it up a little bit. Sure, sure. <laughs> okay. So he puts it in, and I'm like, ah, you know, that hurts. You know? Right. It hurts. Right. And like, um... And so I, my knees start shaking, and then he keeps doing it, and for a couple minutes, and then like I passed out. Like, you passed really, out. I got really nauseous and lightheaded, and I just passed out mm, right there. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> and I woke up, and I'm like, what? he was still going. <laughs> it was early yeah. the next day. He yeah, and I was like, oh my gosh, what just happened? You know, you, you didn't like, hit your head or anything. No, I'm fine. Mm. It's just, it scared me. I didn't, you know. Well, it, um, you know. I, I, yeah. I mean, what about the hot water falling down on you, too? Does that no, do no, anything? Oh, my God. She had a, <laughs> yeah. something in her ass. Uh, like, you know, I mean, give me a break. She, look, there's something called a vasovagal reaction where your uh -huh. vagus nerve is stimulated and uh -huh. nausea is... Uh, uh, it suggests that there's sort of a, you're having a visceral, visceral reaction, and the vagus uh -huh. slows the heart down, and it decreases the blood supply to the brain, and down you go. Okay. So, what do you think? I this is in, in the old days. This is what would have happened. Like when your mom saw Donny Osmond at the airport. This is what uh -huh. happened to her. Right. Unfortunately, we've come to a, t a time in society where her daughter has to get it in the ass in the shower in order to elicit <laughs> the same response. But nevertheless, it's been passed from one generation to the next. All right, Jennifer, hey, you, you, uh, no uh, more of that in the shower. That, and you really, uh, you know, the recommendation would be to have it be checked out, because uh, it's kind of a serious thing. And, and Drew? Yeah. This, uh, has anyone given any thought to the, you know, the, the tub 
it's really it's really a, a minefield of danger. It's where most of the accidents in the home occur, the bathroom. Yeah, like why? 90% or something of serious accidents occur in the bathroom. Well, think about the tub. It's cast iron. It's, uh, it's painted in porcelain. It's slick. It's curved on all corners. And just stepping into the tub mm -hmm. with the bare foot and the water sloshing everywhere mm -hmm. is, uh, I mean, you hit, you hit half on the curve and the foot slides a little. You got the other foot on some tile. There's trouble there. Then everything that protrudes from the tub, at least the older style oh, it's ones. Like, it's like Indiana Jones, like spikes. Yeah, I got a knob. It's it's like in, in my house. I got uh, the rats probably in there right now. Maybe yeah. it'll hurt itself in my tub. That's what, I, that's what I'll pray for. I should pull the tub out and stuff it under the house. Maybe it'll get the rat, kill the rat that way. But the knobs at my house have, you know, they're the kind of handles that have the four. They sort of looks like a cross. Yep. Got the four. I mean, any one of those take your eye out. Absolutely. It's uh, somebody is like, yeah, the one handled knob not dangerous enough. Let's uh, let's let's up it let's up it uh, tenfold here and put yeah. the four four prongs in. You got the other thing sticking out. Everything's made out of something that if uh, you hit your head on, you're down for the count. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No one wants to. Um, there's no modifications being made. No one's. Oh, oh yeah. Got any are. ideas? Oh yes, there are. But well, no. You get old. They put a bar there. Right. But I'm I'm just talking about designing into the new home. I, I'm with you. All right. Mm -hmm. The heated tub. Nicole. Yeah. You're 14. Yes. What's up? Nothing. Well, yeah, actually something. All right. Um, well, um, my boyfriend, Kevin, he will, like, when my friends, he, like, has split personalities. Like, when my friends are around, he'll be all mean to them, he'll be mean to me, but then when I'm, like, when we're by ourselves, like, alone, he'll be, like, all sweet to me and stuff. How about when his friends are around? When his friends are around, he'll be mean. Well, mean to you. Oh, did she say her friends? Yeah, I think that's what she said. Did yeah, you say that? We, like, hang out with the same friends. I see. Oh, so your friends are his friends? Yeah, certain yeah. men have a tendency to do this. Yeah. It's like, it's like they are embarrassed or ashamed to let other people see that they have tender feelings or that they could, mm -hmm. you know, uh, be a couple with someone. Yeah, I think they, they look at it as a weakness or well, something. Well, there's some sort of vulnerability, and they don't like other people seeing that in them. Even though his real feelings are that he does like you and he does want to be in a relationship. But, you know, it's a balance. Hold on, i got to sneeze here. I will wait, don't worry. Uh, Take your time, buddy. Yeah, uh, it lap. Could be that rat, those there's, rat hairs. There's, a, <laughs> oh, you know, when I was a kid, I got rat mite bites, mites from a rat. How do you know they were, it was your mom? No, no, it was over my grandparents. Yeah, but how do they know, who knows their rat mite bites? Because my uh, grandpa captured one and, like, took it in somewhere. The mite? The mite. Oh, my God, this is the grossest thing in the world. I'll tell it after we talk to right. Nicole. Wow. So oh, I've never my heard. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm suing. It's all in the lawsuit. It's all in the lawsuit. It's your family. The suit against your family. I'm primarily yeah. suing my um, my um, my family. Yeah, yeah but yeah. my grandparents are included. Too. Yeah, right. That's what I mean. Yeah. Including my grandfather's deceased. Yeah, of course. I'm going yeah, after the course. casket. Yeah. Uh, Nicole? Mm -hmm. That's why you're frozen. Uh, yeah. What the hell? Oh, yeah. Guys do this all the time. Why don't you just tell him? Yeah, tell him to knock it off. You can shame him a little Remember, bit. Remember, you're in control. Women are in control of relationships. And, and you know what? If you really want to embarrass them, tell them to stop showing off. He'll always, like, ignore me. But yeah. yeah. Then, I, I, then when I, he asks what's wrong, then he'll be like, then he'll just be like, uh, well, uh, <laughs> he'll, he'll ask what's wrong, and, I, and I, I'll be like, you know what's wrong. And he'll be like, no, I don't. No, no, he probably right. doesn't know. He probably doesn't know. So just be, <laughs> you know, like, like, like uh, pretend like you're trying to teach him something. Show him what he does. Show, tell him how it makes you feel and see if he can yes. accommodate. When I was, uh, like, 10... I used to sleep over at my grandparents' house all the time, uh, and everyone in the house got these rat mite bites, and they were all over everyone's body. And true, you're talking about scabies. You really? Are. No, no, no. These things. I'll tell you what these things look like. They look like miniature volcanoes on your skin. Yeah. They were um, the size of, you know, a boil, and they were open at the top in big eruptions. Huh. I mean, I, I've never seen anything like it. Huh. And I, you know, you know me. You're talking to the guy who's the uh, two-time recipient of the uh, ass carbuncle. Right. How did you, you've seen them all? Never seen anything like it. Large and open at the top. Uh, just the shape of an of a open volcano. How did you get the mite? Uh, get? Apparently, uh, like a rat had died or something. And these uh, little mites, little no, but critters no, no, no. that we're, live who, on who, it. Who? Oh, I told him my grandfather 
felt you know felt like something bite him or something like in bed or what have it. you and he you know he caught it and he like took it in somewhere and they're like basically you know fleas for rats yeah. essentially hmm. and uh I, everyone was destroyed well, by rats these have things. fleas well well these were mice these were mice yeah. yeah i don't know what they were but they bit everyone in the goddamn house and it was a the scariest craziest funkiest most alien looking skin thing you've ever seen in your life and it was grotesque <laughs> Thank God I was like nine and couldn't fully process what was going on because I would have just run down the... Thank God I wasn't stoned. How did they treat if you? If I was stoned when I heard they were rat mites, I would have, I would have just put a, a shotgun in my mouth. How did they treat it? Yeah, you know, just a bath and... Quell. What's it? Quell? In no, those we, days. No, you didn't have, we didn't have the mites. They, they jump on you and bite you like I fleas. See, I see, I see. What do you think? I was, I was carrying these things around? That's... Listen, jackass, I told... All right. That's the scabies are you know, mites. Scabies I, are mites. They I'm dig not scabies. Skin. I, know, I didn't but say I'm scabies. Maybe the rat no, might. you had scabies in your mind. You jumped to scabies. Right. They jumped on you and bit you like a flea. Hmm. Leanne? Yes. Oh, grotesque. <laughs> grotesque, Drew. You've never seen any skin thing like it. Oh, you have? <laughs> I've seen grotesque skin. Wide things, open. They, they all look like volcanoes, just wide open. You're uh, 22. What's up? Um, not much. <laughs> I just have a question. I actually have a scenario for what's going on, then I'll have a question. There you go. Is that okay? All right. Mm -hmm. Um, during intercourse, I don't, um, have orgasms. Like, never. <laughs> and, uh, I was just wondering, my question is, um... <laughs> Pretty funny. Something She's amused. Do what? Go ahead, man. Oh. <laughs> Uh, just the question is, is there something I'm doing wrong or something I can do more? Or No, that is that, that is common? most most women, yes, that is common. You do have orgasm with, say, oral sex, that kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's your, in the average with that. You're okay. doing good. You're having the, uh, you're having, you're having an orgasm, which, which is, uh, puts you slightly ahead of the game at 22, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> and, and having it during intercourse is unusual. Okay. When, when does that, like... When will that I mean, <laughs> for most women, that never happens. Never happens. Never happens. Not, I mean, not in any kind of regular way, certainly. I mean, regular way. <laughs> My experience, never, ever, ever. One woman, ever. Never, ever. <laughs> never. Never, ever. Okay, good. I don't feel so bad. All right, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. How's, uh, are you married? Um, I'm separated, yeah. Separated. Okay. Yeah. How's that going? Good? Um... Yeah, I guess, yeah. All right. Well, you're gonna get I like back being to... separated. You do? Gonna... Yeah. What do you do? Florida. You strip? What do you do? Oh, no. No, actually, um, I work for um, Walt Disney World. Disney, Disney World. World. Same difference. Yeah. What do you do there, just out of curiosity? Um, I'm in merchandise. Which country? Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom. All right. Yeah. So you're selling, like, uh, stuffed tiggers? No, no, yeah. yeah. Well, that's all uh, Simba and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, what's, the, what's the big move? Uh, what's moving now? What's Which, moving now? Uh, yeah. Lilo and Stitch. Lilo and Stitch. Lilo and Stitch. Of course. Yeah. Big movers. That and uh, Lilo, is Lilo the Hawaiian chick? Yeah. And uh, Stitch is the monster. Yeah, Stitch, he's Stitch, a little he, alien. He's the alien, yeah. right? Yeah. All right. Good uh, movie. <laughs> yeah. Good movie. Yeah, here it's good. Your kids into that? Suck. Oh yeah, they went to it. Suck big time. Blue big time, Drew says. What uh did your kids like it? Oh yeah, they loved it. It's great when you're a kid you just go to every movie and announce it's the best movie you've ever seen. <laughs> what did my son say was the best one they ever saw? Oh wait a minute. Oh, Scooby Doo. My son announced it was the best movie he'd ever seen because there's uh our buddy Matthew Willard has about a about a four minute fart scene. Wow. And in the middle of the scene, uh, my son leans over and goes this is the best scene I've ever seen in a movie. Leans over two minutes later and goes, this is the best movie I ever saw. He called it a, I believe he called it a, a cinematic triumph. triumph. Triumph, he did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> well, that's nice. See? Yeah. See? He'll, he'll remember that. And then, you know what will end up, you know what ends up happening? This is what ends up happening to kids. He'll see that movie. He'll say it's the greatest movie he's ever seen. Then he'll never see it again. Yeah. Then I'll run into him 30 years from now. He'll be 22, yeah. And I'll be talking to him, and he'll tell me the greatest movie he's ever seen in his life was, <laughs> was Scooby-Doo. And I'll tell him it was a stinking pile, flaming turd. And he'll say, oh, no, no. And it, I, I figured this out. When, when a movie hits you between the age of, like, 9 and 13, it's the greatest movie you've ever seen. Yeah. I, I've, I've, I've done this uh, many times. I ran into someone who was telling me that the 
Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, best movie he'd ever seen, you know? <laughs> and I was like, that piece of ass Steve Martin movie, that sucked, you know? And they're like, oh, man, it's my favorite comedy. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute, let's see. There's, there's, a, there's a window about 15 to 17, too, where favorite comedies yeah. start to come of age. They're still crap. Right. right, but you really, you kind of still remember them. No, you, do, you, you do the math. You go, yeah. okay, so you're 26, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels came out in 87. You were, you were 14 when you saw it? Yep. I'm like, okay, that's why. You think it's great? You think, yep. You think corn dogs the greatest food you've ever ate? <laughs> All right. You ready to uh, take a break here, Drew, or what do you oh, want Oh, yeah, to? let's take a break. Let's go see this uh, cinematic triumph that we have performed uh, uh, in here. Okay. All right, we'll uh, take ourselves a little break, and we'll be uh, right back with uh, Emma, who's 13's mom is crazy, after this. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew's just uh, watching a little tape of a uh, man show bit he was in, and it is over now. So uh, he is walking into the studio. I say in five, four, here he comes. Three, two, one. Dr. Drew, everybody. Emma. Yes. 13 years old. First of all, I just want to say, Adam, in five years, I'm going to lose my virginity to you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be great to get a list. <laughs> How to get that so list hot. going. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, Adam. I, I love, love you. I love you too, Dr. Drew. I love you. Thanks, Emma. Where, what, uh, oh, you're in Santa Rosa? Is that California? Uh, it's up near San Francisco, kind of. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll check the statutory rape laws. Uh, it may not be as well, many could, as five you years. You could yeah. maybe run for state senate and have them changed. Yeah, how about that? Yeah. Get, get a change of 12? Well, no, wait a minute. She's eight. She'll be eight. Oh, you can't wait, you were saying. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Maybe no one will find out. Yeah, we should stop talking about it, though. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what's up? All right, well, okay, my mom just, like, I don't know. She She always, like, yells at me, and, like, she's just, like, crazy, like, um, like, she kind of talks to herself once in a while. Like, I'll walk into the kitchen, and she'll be like, oh, God, there's no more cheese or something. And she'll be like... Well, I'll be stuff. fair now, Adam. You, you routinely do that kind of thing. Adam right? does? In the well, kitchen? Yeah, where's the coffee but guy? But it's okay doing? if Adam does. Uh, I don't really... Yeah, I, what I do mainly alone is I fart and then laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's sort of like talking to yourself, you know? <laughs> well, a lot of people do that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about the audible laugh, though. I mean, I think a lot of people may break wind and smile a little bit, but I, I actually guffaw. Uh, okay. But, I don't know, do you, like, talk to yourself in the fridge? Or, like... Well, you put your head in there and go, like, uh, Dijonese, Dijonese, Dijonese. Where <laughs> are you hiding, Dijonese? Uh. I don't think I mean, I mean it's nuts. I don't know, but she mm. talks to the car, too. Uh, uh, one time, she put well, the car, it was stupid, and it broke down right when she said it. Yeah, yeah that's another thing. Well, uh, people don't talk. By the way, people don't talk to their car like they used to. Because back in the day, yeah, the car to name. everyone talked to yeah. their car. Because especially when uh, when you're a little bit poor and you're growing up. My family always had piles of crap, so it would be like, come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Don't fail me now. Ying, 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 ying. Come on, sweetheart. Come on. And then they then they go nuts on it when it did. You son of a bitch! <laughs> Well, where are you going with this, Emma? What is it you want to try to okay, well, say about your mom? Like, over the... will be, like... Just the other day, like, I go to my friend's house, and um, her parents, for some reason, they called my parents and told them that they always catch me to Mexicans' cars and, like, driving with them, you know? But that's not true. My parents that, and now my parents, like, won't let me, like, go anywhere because they said that. And I don't know. I just, like... My friends recently have been, like, have you ever thought that, like... One night you'll go to sleep, and then the next day you won't wake up. I just want to, like, have fun, you know? But mm. I don't, like, drive around with Mexicans. And well, mom, well like fir first, first off, Mexicans uh, drive burros <laughs> and donkeys. Am I right, Drew? I don't with believe that they, the yeah. Yeah, I don't believe they drive cars. So there's, there's a hole in their logic right there, right off the top. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, we, I, I can barely track. I, I don't know. Emma sounds a little nutty. Yeah, Mom I, I, sounds a little nutty. Yeah. Here's the deal, Emma. I'm guessing Emma's dad's not around. Yeah. And Emma's got a... What happens a lot, we haven't talked about this in a little while, which is one parent sort of skips out on the family, usually Papa. 
then uh, Mama stays around, does the best she can kind of thing, while Papa's uh, living somewhere in Florida normally, doing a lot of deep-sea fishing and banging a lot of uh, ugly barmaids, really, and boozing a lot. And yet he becomes sort of glorified mm -hmm. in the child's eyes. And Mama, the day-to-day -day parent, the one who stuck it out, gets all this crap. Demonized. Yeah. Right. So, Emma, take it easy on Mom just a little bit. She sounds like Emma sounds intelligent, like she's doing okay. If your parents are a little bit wacky, get involved with school and kind of stay out of their, stay out of their crosshairs. Yeah, and as far as this friend reporting weird stuff, why, why, if it's so bizarre and untrue, ignore it. Right. Just forget it. Right. Hey, uh, Brandy? Yeah? You're 24? Yeah. What's up? Um, I think I have a solution to your rap problem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I heard, um... Coca-Cola, feed them Coca-Cola, and they'll they'll die because they don't like burp or fart, nothing. Yeah, but they'll explode. Yeah, so you yeah. Could, huh? Yeah, they'll explode. Yeah, they, everyone has one of these uh, hair brain wives tails things, and it never works. <laughs> How about just no, rap? Poison? Have you ever tried it? Yes, many, many times. As a matter of fact, I was uh, I conducted a study at uh, Bowling Green University in the uh, mid '80s that lasted uh, four years. It was a double blind study, in which uh, we fed. Well, we we used Pepsi and Coke, and it turns out the rats like uh, Pepsi better. Sixty five percent of the rats. Yeah, they were and they were surprised themselves. Why? Why? Uh, why? I I don't know why. But when it, in a nationwide taste test uh, with uh, Coke and Pepsi using rats, turns out that rats. It's not a taste test. It's Coke has something that Pepsi doesn't. But but yeah, I I know it it has it has something that makes it taste crappy because rats like it three to one over Coke. You seriously have tried it? Yeah, I, I've tried that with rats. Yes. Um, okay, yeah. well, I guess not. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, baby. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Didn't we already uh, mention the fact that you use rat poison? Well, here's the other thing, too. Th this is this is nonsense. Rat, you, a rat can, you can throw a rat in the toilet. You can flush the toilet. The rat can slide down the trap that's built into the toilet and then slide down the other trap that's in the plumbing and pop out into the sewer and run down the sewer and pop out the sewer grate and come back into your house. Now, how's a goddamn teaspoon of Pepsi going to kill it? You see what I'm saying? Yes. I don't think gamma radiation kills rats. Yeah. Don't tell me beverages do. It's nonsense. Oh, yeah, I could just see. You give it an eye drop of Coke and the thing just explodes. Yeah, pow. Guts everywhere. Please. And how do you give it? What do you? Would I inject it with the coke, or what do I do? Just tube, a, tube feed. As soon as you tube down, I you know. give it like an intravenous coke injection. Christina. Yeah. You're 19. Yeah, I'm 19. And I have a question. Um, okay, I guess I'm kind of sexually active, mm -hmm. and the problem with me is that I'm always wet, like even when I'm not turned on, and. Because of that, like, it gives, like, a really bad odor. And, like, when I'm with guys, you know, it has to be like, oh, wow, this sucks, you know? Like, I can't have a guy go down or, you know? Yeah. How do you stop him from going down? I, you know what? I just say I'm too shy because, you know, I'm, like, kind of, like, chunky. So I'm like, oh, no, I'm too shy. And like, okay, okay, you know? So then I'm like, oh, well, let's just do it, you know? So, yeah. like, half of the time I'm usually just kind of. But pretending that I'm drunk, you know, uh, so they can just like do it really quick. And like, I don't want to go to the doctor because I don't know. Like, I think that's kind of embarrassing. Well, wait, wait a minute. You've never seen a head of pelvic exam? Oh, uh, no. Okay. Well, if you're sexually active, you have to do that. You have to do that. Right. So women that are sexually active in your age get cervical cancer very re re easily and very commonly. And that's a deadly condition. You need to take care of that. <laughs> Christina. Yeah. How chunky are you? <laughs> sort of chunky. Yeah, you could say that. Well, what do I give you? What are you coming in at? Hi height and weight. Oh, well, I'm not going to tie my weight, but I'm like 5'6". Five, five. And, you know, just like, I don't know, chunky. I don't want to give 5'6", about 180? Uh, a little more. Oh, one, okay, let me, uh, let me do the radio math here. 5'6", more than 180. Five, a little five. more. A little more than 180. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got uh, five four and uh, fifteen sixteenths, Drew, Ooh. and uh, one eighty nine. 
Yeah. But uh, one eighty nine to one ninety four actually. Okay. Oh, oh hold on. Just went <laughs> up to two oh five. We're at two oh five. What do you think of two oh five? I yeah, it's pretty damn close. Well close. We're now at two eighteen. <laughs> no, like yeah, fuck yeah, right there, uh huh. Okay, now we just um, got to 222. Is that like, I don't know, that's kind of embarrassing. I'm going to grow her weight. It's not right. Uh, yeah, well, here's the deal. Now, Drew, if you're a bigger gal and you got, you got like, bigger people sweat more. Yeah. Is, it, is there, you, know, you got the thighs pressing together there and the belly and everything. And more moisture and there's more estrogen, too. Oh, you make more estrogen. Yeah, and the estrogen can create some of that moisture. I don't, like, I know, like, I don't sweat. Like, I really don't. I don't know. Good. Well, that's fine. But you also can have more moisture, such as it is. But isn't, aren't those big, meaty thighs like Tupperware? Uh, no. They just hold the freshness in there? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Okay. Well, I mean, I mean, look at it this way, Drew. You know when you see these spindly chicks and they're walking away and their knees are rubbing, but there's open space all the way up to the vagina? Uh -huh. You know that? Uh. Well, it's like driving with the windows rolled down in your car, right? Sure. And then you see those chicks where the thighs rubbing together. It's like the calf hits, the knee hits, and there's one big solid block all the way up, all the way up to the small of their back. It's got to create a little more, a little more moisture in there, a little more heat in there, a little more friction, or at right? At very least, a little less circulation. There's not, there's not much air passing through there. That's right. If you painted that girl's vagina, it would dry half as fast as the one I took, uh, the waif one. What kind of paint are you talking about? Latex, okay. weather beater, yeah, huh. 10-year warranty, exterior probably in a semi-gloss okay. or eggshell. All right, yeah. Okay. I'm with you. But uh, I'll tell you what, the estrogen can have a profound effect on that, too. All right. So maybe Christina should just focus on... Getting an exam. Getting sure an exam. Okay. But also, you know, 5'5 five, five and 200 and change is... is uh, at 19, is probably a bad direction to be going in. Yeah, a good idea to get a little control of that. Yeah, so obesity is a real problem in our country. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, Christina, mm -hmm. let's focus on the diet and let the uh, vagina take care of itself. Oh, okay. All right. All right. You just uh, you exercise. know eat right, get a little exercise. Okay. You come over to my house, you chase that rat around. <laughs> All right. I'll sit you down in the basement. Okay. Well, thanks, you guys. All right. Oh, she's mad. Why is she mad? That's weird. I don't know. I think it was the I think it was the weight thing. Yeah. yeah. You didn't give it... Well, I don't know. Maybe it was a, wasn't a bogus call, was it? I don't think so. No? No, I think so. I think, I think she just couldn't... It, what, what's startling about it is like, she's like, Oh, thank you. Nice. I, you know, it's like, <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk with you. And then you're, then you're a prick. Yeah, well, technically an asshole. Yeah. I mean, you know. All right. All right, baby, keep packing it on. And uh, but you you know what that time. that though suggests to me though, hmm. if there's that kind of sort of you know trigger rage there, ready to go, and what the weight may be about is you know defend against being close to people, and I, I just I just immediately start thinking about abuse patterns and things. Yeah. All right, Clay. Yeah. You're 14. Yeah. What's up? Um. Well, there's this girl. And she's like three years older than me. Mm -hmm. And um, we met like July 4th, like at this party. And like I've been really into her ever since. Have you been seeing her? No, no, no. I'm trying to figure out a way how to. Like, oh, I How have, to break it. July 4th. Huh? Have you ever seen her again? Yeah. I talk to her all the time. On yeah. the phone? Well, no, when he's on the toilet. On the phone? Yeah. And you haven't seen her again? Clay, I'm asking, are you, have you seen her again? Have you dated her? Oh, no, no. No, yeah, just, that's just, what I'm trying to say. I don't know. You just talked to her on the phone? Yeah. Why don't you ask her out? Because, like, she's 17 and, like, I'm 14. And yet you keep talking to her regularly? Yeah, like friends. You met her July 4th? Right. And you got, did you get her number? Yeah. So, so you've been calling her? Yeah. And what kind of stuff do you talk with her about? Just life in general. How long did you stay on the phone with her? Um, roughly half an hour. How, like, I mean, how many uh, times have you talked to her since July 4th? Uh, six or seven. Hmm. Hmm. Online. She's, she's probably wondering online. How many times have you actually heard her voice? Oh, six or seven times. Right. I talked to her online. She's probably wondering why you haven't asked her out, I would think. 
When you asked for her phone number, how did you ask for her phone number? Well, we kind of just traded phone numbers. How did that come up? Like, can I get your phone number? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you mine, too. You asked Never, that. Never any satisfaction out I know. of her goddamn callers, is it? Did you say to her, like... Hey, it was nice talking. I'd like to talk to you some more. How about we? Uh, how about you give me your number? Or did you say like, I mean, we should get together? Or how did you do it? Did, who does she know? Why was she at that party? What are you leaving out of this story, she Clay? Was, she was like a family friend. Her parents are family friends, and she just came along with her parents. Uh huh. You've never met her before. No. And yeah. how how is it you never met her before? If uh, she, her parents are family friends. No, I don't. Just. It's kind of like when you don't meet your cousin until you're like 18 and stuff, something like All that. Right. And then really? again, I didn't, yeah, whatever. We, I still didn't hear how it was the conversation about the phone number came up. Can I get your number? You asked her. Yeah. And how did she react to that? She was like, oh, sure, we could talk and stuff. And she, uh, she just ask her out. What, 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 yeah. what's the guy? He, ask her out. Yeah, you definitely have to ask her out, and that's that. She also got off a long distance relationship two months ago, though. Ask her out, Clay. Why she Just say spend that? time face-to-face -face yeah. and see how it goes. Now, hold on a second. Uh, Here's what's going on here, Drew. I get the feeling that there's something that Clay isn't telling us yeah. that is leading Clay not to ask her out. Right. She's sent some sort of message to him. Yes. Somehow done something. Talked about this other relationship. Or, or talked about the age difference between them. Clay, she ever said anything to you to indicate that she didn't want to go out with you? She talked about her boyfriend a lot, like how her relationship like ended and stuff but I, the only the big problem that I called for was like how to talk to her and how to break the ice well which is what you've been doing I don't normally do this uh, Clay but uh, I'll do the phone reenactment scenario oh, with oh you okay alright Clay you're Clay, Clay you ask me out what's her name uh Lauren sorry huh Lauren hey man that's my sister's name dude <laughs> what's up <laughs> okay are right, you ready yeah. Bring. Bring. Hello. 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 <laughs> um, is Lauren there? <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> Go with it. This is. He's a method actor. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Lauren. Phone. Hang up. Mom, hang up. They sound exactly alike. Hello. Clay? Yeah? Hi, this is Lauren. How are you? Mm, come see, come see. You're what? sick? Yeah, what's up? Um, I was kind of wondering if you would like to get together. Mm. Um, what, 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 what for? Just to hang out and talk. We can, we can talk on the phone, can't we? I was, I was meeting on a more intimate level. Ooh, intimate? Where are we going? Uh, dinner. Ooh, what kind of food? I like Italian. Would she be driving? We walk. You walk? Where, 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 where are we eating? The Arby's? Uh, we'll go to a nice Italian restaurant, I guess. Okay, I like that Italian. Okay. Uh, yes, those people can cook. All right, so Saturday at 8? Saturday at 8. Okay. All right, bring a corsage. Uh, sure. And I'll bring the boutonniere. Right on. And I'll see you there. Okay. All right. <laughs> he's fine. He's <laughs> yeah, he's fine. He hears the word intimate. Yeah. Shocked. I thought... Uh, going to walk her to dinner. Yeah, she I was that stuff. 14. I thought intimate was uh, was that uh, Danish. I thought it was that pastry company. In ten minutes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought that was for until I was like 19. That's what I thought they, oh, yeah, they make a fat-free uh, pound cake. It's delightful. All right, let's uh, take ourselves a little break. Clay is fine. Clay is fine, yeah. Clay is fine. And we'll see whether or not the relationship is fine. Yeah, it, ask her out and call us back. Find out, yeah. That's right. We'll be back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm uh, Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Got a, got a showdown with my rant in about an hour and a half. Looking forward to that. You know, it's going to be... The other thing hasn't moved. It's been catatonic, and it will start moving around as soon as uh, I get home. About you got to get that pose that I struck on uh, Sunday night with the, you know, <laughs> the, the Aboriginal pose with the, the kitchen knife and the... <laughs> I mean, 
I was crawling through the bushes in the middle of the night. There you go. You know, the problem with the rat is uh, you walk around your house, you're standing by the sofa, you're standing by the bed, and you're, you're fantasizing about what's under it now. That's the, you're picturing you coming out. You've been living with this rat for probably the whole no, a it's year. A, it's been under the house. Oh, I've, I'm yeah. here and I've heard All it right. under the house. Well, what do you think? No, it's not been that there. long. It's not been that long. Not really. I, I know my rats. And believe me, ain't one. No way. No way. Yeah, it's one. Oh, no it's the work of one rat. yourself. Yeah, it's a lone ratman. It's, it's true. How do you how get out of my basement, though? Uh, Rebecca? Yeah? You're 18? Yep. What's up? Um, I have a friend who is gay. She thinks she's gay. And she told me that she can't see herself with anyone but me. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, and she's a good friend of yours? Well, we were best friends for a long time. And yeah, but Rebecca, you're not gay, right? No, not at all, okay, and I fooled her. All right, well, there you go. But the thing is, is she was molested mm -hmm. in third grade. We were together through that. You knew that was happening? Yeah. Wow. We, it was going on at school. Oh, my God. Did you have to witness it? I witnessed him leaning over her and kind of threatening. I didn't know what was going on at the time, though. Wow. When did this come to light? Um... She started talking about it in late second grade. But it happened in third grade. Well, premonition, I eerie premonition. You found out about the grade. And did yeah. did was this guy reported? Well, when I found out, I was kind of livid. Like I always was trying to protect her because she was kind of little, and I was always like bigger and trying to protect her and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I told my mom, and my mom called the school, and we tried to get into it and two other kids came forward and said he's doing things but it was a small town 10 years ago and he still worked there nothing he wasn't no charges were filed they sat all the people all the little kids down and said admit it this didn't happen oh boy. like i i just kept crying i was i couldn't believe it like he wasn't like he Afterwards, I was sitting outside the office after they'd sat me down, and he came over and was leaning over me and was like, I forgive you for doing all this, and like right up against my face, and it was really creepy. And he still, can I say his name? No. Oh, uh, dang it. Uh, yeah. No, I don't care. I, no. I mean, I just, what, what, about, what do your parents think? Do they believe you? Well, it wasn't about her, it was about the... I know, but yeah. did they believe what happened? Who's... Ten years ago, I, I've never brought it up again. And wow. I, the guy never lost his job? No. You, you, have, you, have, you have more than one kid coming forward reporting the same activity? Two girls and a boy. All, and I knew two of them, and then one girl I didn't know very well at all. And I talked to the two I knew, and their stories were exactly the same to me. Yeah, right. Did your friend have some other abuse history as well? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I've known her since first grade and never has, but, like, I listen to your show all the time, and I love you guys. Just so you know, you're, you're awesome to me, both of you. Thanks, Sweet Pea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to molest you next time oh, I yeah, see Oh, yeah, but by the way, that girl who earlier said you could have her virginity, you can have mine, Adam. Do you I still mean, have yours? Yeah, you can have mine. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. That's two. Yeah, there you go. All right. We're have to start it. It's such a busy. bizarre concept. Here, take this. Yeah. Right. Get my Dodger tickets. I'll trade you some semen for your virginity. <laughs> wow. But. <laughs> All right. So, listen, well, look, you're not a lesbian. You need to maintain that boundary with your friend. I understand she's somebody you care a great deal about. And you are sort of codependent on her. Be careful. There's kind of an enmeshed quality of the relationship where you're always rescuing her and this sort of thing. Get her to some help so somebody else can actually do the helping. And then you can just be the friend, which is what you should be. Right. Lynn? Yes? 14? Yes. Six-year-old boyfriend is jealous of uh, your friends? Girls. Your girlfriends? Yes. Yeah, I said, all right, your friends. When he's around really. guys, he'll talk about how it would be cool to be with me and another girl. But when we're around other girls, he gets really jealous. So I'm not sure if... Yeah. He wants to be with another girl with me. Oh boy! Or if he just is, this is a young lady thinking not with the male brain. Are you are you having sex with this guy? Yes. Oh boy! And are, are you seriously uh, considering a threesome with this guy? Um, when I met him, I had a girlfriend. 
Oh, maybe. What happened to you? I don't know. Bad parenting? Oh, sexual abuse. Sexual Bam abuse? Chaos. Want to bet? Um, I was raped when I was four. There you go. Who did that? Parents, drug addicts? My parents? Oh. Um, I don't think so. Who raped? Do you know your parents? Do I know my parents? Yes, I do. Who raped you when you were four? Um, my grandma's neighbor. Mm. Is that is that illegal in Florida? I think that's still just a misdemeanor. Is it not in Florida? I'm not sure. Yeah. And did you report this person? Um, it was reported. Have you been treated? It was. It happened in Wisconsin. Mm. Where this is. So it was reported after I moved to Florida, and they said that they couldn't do anything about it. Have you been treated for this? Um, I've gone through a lot of therapy. Yeah. And and this was an older man. This. Yeah. I mean, the guy was 40 years old or something? Well, at one point, my grandma was married to him, so I'm pretty sure he's pretty old. Your grandma was married to him. And then he lived next door? And your parents were normal people? Yes. Uh, why do I... They're divorced now, but... Yeah. Yeah. This guy, and did, did this guy, what did he do? Did he have sex with you? Um, she was raped, she said. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, uh, yeah. Nick, leave the room. Uh, oh, oh, boy. Well, well, let's pick this Ingram. up after that. All right, hold on. Lynn, Lynn. Yes? Hang on a second, all right? Okay. We got to take a little break. Okay. I got to go uh, rape the urinal, so hold on a second. <laughs> okay. But don't worry. Oh. oh, man. Poor Lynn. Oh, I love these guys. What a, what a delightful old F this guy is. Oh, he's probably 38 at the time. Married to the grandma. Grandma. Lynn's grandma. Uh, might have been 26. All right, we'll find out after this. Hey, everybody. Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Let's uh, hop back to the phones and speak to Lynn. Lynn is 14. Her boyfriend's 16. She's having sex with him. She got uh, raped when she was four by Before her the, uh, grandmom's ex-husband. Is that, by the way, the grandma's ex-husband your mom or dad's father? Um, no. No. Okay. How old, how old is your grandmother right now? I don't know. Approximately. I have no clue. 30? 70? <laughs> Probably around 70. Yeah, no, no clue, huh? No. I don't really talk to my grandma a whole lot. Okay. okay. She lives in Wisconsin. Okay. All uh, right. How old's your parents? Uh, thirty-five. Thirty-five. Yes. All right. So, uh, this was this man uh, approximately your grandmother's age. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I wish this guy would die a horrible death. Mm -hmm. it would be yeah. Nice. So do I. Yeah. It's I shouldn't say that because if he shows up dead, they'll blame me. No. No. Nah. No. That's fine. I'll take the blame. Congratulate you, but not yeah. All right. So, um, what uh, have you gotten some counseling? Uh, too much. <laughs> what do you mean too much? This is the kind of thing that would take years. <laughs> I've been in counseling for like four years. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Look, are you using any kind of protection so you don't get pregnant? Yes. What, what are you using? Condoms. Mm. Plus, I make them pull out. So. Condoms and pull out. All right. Yeah. Don't let them go in without wearing a condom. You can still get pregnant that way. Yeah. Okay. All no, right, no threesomes. What, no what's going on with your parents? Why do I do I pick up just chaos in your family of origin? <laughs> what? A lot of chaos in your family. I don't know. I just come from a long line of horny women. I guess. Yeah, that just means victims of abuse, pretty much. Right. That's what that means. <laughs> okay. Well, you well, are a victim of abuse, Lynn. And that's what creates sexual compulsion, right? I don't know. Did Personally, that, I like sex. Okay. Well, I understand like, that, but you sexualize true, everything, true, probably. True. Oh. Listen, I'll go home and talk to my rat. Do <laughs> for a more, more meaningful conversation. Lynn, listen to me. I'm on damage control here. Don't get pregnant. Don't get pregnant. Don't have the threesome and don't get pregnant. All right? Okay. And don't kill yourself and uh, try to enjoy Why life. Why would I kill myself? I don't know. Just uh, take it easy on yourself and don't get pregnant, please, okay? Okay. All right. No cutting along All the right. way. <sighs> Look, I, you know, I, I know uh, this stuff's in the news a little bit with these, uh, with these guys, these horrible, horrible pedophiles. But 
we got to do something with these guys. They destroy lives. Yeah. I mean, they just ruin them. Uh huh. They just look. He, they'd be better off. The kid would be in better shape so if if the guy just took a crowbar to him. How about just this, beat the crap out of the crowbar. Kid, this uh, Samantha Runyon. That guy was already. Th these things are not perpetrated by guys who are doing it for the first time. They increase the thrill they need. You right. understand? They they get more kids, more bizarre, more intrusive, more violent. Right. No. Here, here again is the thing. It doesn't. It, this is something that happened to them, and the amazing. You know, it's it, it it's something that was wired into them, and it needs to be controlled. Well, it needs to be really stomped out. It yeah. needs to be extinguished. Is what it needs to be. I mean, here's the thing too about these kinds of crimes. These uh, these crimes, sexual of a sexual nature, which is other crimes have to do with money. I mean, we have to do with product. Or you know what I mean? Some sort of violent, you know, people. Yeah, yeah but violent. what I mean is, is you know, you rob a bank. It's not because you hate banks. You rob it for money. You, you're high on drugs. You steal a car stereo. You want to get a fix. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. When you're raping kids. You're raping kids. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, hey, can you stop doing that? Well, yeah, he stopped doing that. See, now, when a guy is stealing for money, stealing because he needs a hit of crack, stealing because he's got to pay his mm -hmm. phone bills, stealing whatever, he wants money, well, you cure the guy's crack addiction, and he stops stealing. Right. You get him a job, he stops stealing. But when you're effing four-year-olds, you're effing four-year-olds. You're not doing it for anything. There's nothing to cure. Do you, do you see what I'm well, saying? There, there's no motive. Be, but there, no uh, maybe, but there's no motivation to to. Uh, there's not some ancillary motivation. Not something else causing the desire to ha screw with the kids. Right. You're. At, you it's have a drug. job. You have a wife. You have mm -hmm. a whatever. And you're effing the neighbor's kid. Mm -hmm. That's just. You're just taking a chance at effing the neighbor's kid. Mm -hmm. You you get nothing out of it, but a boner. Mm -hmm. That's why we got to put a bullet in your head. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why you need the bullet. Because that's just pure, unadulterated motivation. And you can't get rid of that motivation. Just drive, yeah. Yeah, and by the way, if you think it's a good idea to bang a four-year-old at any point in your life, you need a bullet in your head. There's no curing that. There's no, oh, I see what I did was wrong. Yeah, I crossed the line. It's not going to happen again. I'm on the straight and narrow now. You know what? I was high. I had a couple of, I had like uh, four beers. Do you know what I mean? If that thought even scampers through your head like that rant in my basement it, forget about lingering there if, even if it just runs through you need to kill yourself and somehow it was contained through much of history you know what I mean I, I, I don't yeah, know how contained sort of, sort of it broken, was we've really broken it loose though in some way in recent years I think we killed these people and or no one ever talked about it no one ever talked about it but also there was I mean there were really serious um, boundaries to this you know yeah, barriers to this kind of behavior that that after the sixties and seventies, like hey, whatever, whatever. Look, now you have books about kids being sexual beings. You have these crazy books that are being written now. Yeah. Oh, we're just being uptight to you know to try to think that a four year old wouldn't want some kind of sexual. Um, are you? Oh, Drew with the F word. You better blot that out. Watch that, Ken. Drew used the F word on the air. He got fired up. Everybody. He's a passionate, passionate man. Yeah. Listen, I, I don't know what the answer is. I know that. Uh, I, you know, I you know to me everything's a car analogy. I take you. Know, some cars get uh, stolen, they get stripped, they get in an accident. The insurance guy looks at them and goes, "Yeah, we can fix that." And then there's other cars where they just go, "It's total, it's total, just crush it, strip it, and crush it." And that's what you got to do to the yeah. That's what you got to do the 45 year old who uh, decides he wants to sink his uh, filthy grubs, grubby mitts into a uh, four year old. It's got to be crushed, like a car that's. Uh, Burnt beyond repair. Brian? Hey, what's going on, Adam? Speaking of cars, you're yeah. 20. Well, I just wanted to say first, Drew, it's great to hear the F word, because I was listening on hold, and there's no delay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Drew fired up, everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah, boy. All right, so now you say... And I'm yeah, I work as a, uh, in the service department of a BMW dealership, and I hear you talking about your M3. Right. And we got about 15 of them in with the seats are just collapsed. The, like, the cushioning just becomes collapsed and, like, the springs start to poke through. Whoa. On what well, year? The 2001s to 2002s. Hmm. What model number? What do you mean? 
What what model number? DM3s. I know, but what are they? What's the body style? E36. E46. E46. That's retard. Right. I'm 20, man. I just started uh, working. All right. right. But yeah, the spring. How come I know more than and the guy who works at the BMW dealership? You know Don't I everybody. always tell you that? You know more than everybody about everything. So, so okay. be it. Thank you. Why are you always surprised by that? <laughs> I don't know, because I knew you didn't know it was E46, even though you worked at the dealer. Uh, All right, let's not get caught up on that. You're right. You're right. So the springs poke through, and they right. make your asshole as big as a mason. Oh, oh there we I didn't go. Know it. <laughs> springs poke through the seat. Drew, you, you, uh, listen, listen. When I saw that thing up there, and it said, uh, and uh, there's a recall on your BMW, it's very tempting. It's tantalizing. Although I looked at it and said, wait a minute. W one of our callers is going to tell me something I don't know. Impossible. Mm -hmm. Impossible. Impossible. It's never, ever, ever, ever happened in the seven years I've been here where anyone has surprised me with one kernel of knowledge or truth. E36. I did like his comeback. I'm 20. I like that. <laughs> Springs poking through the sea. <laughs> All right. Good times. Wait a minute, though. He did know the E36 part. Sorry. Hey, Brian. Yeah. What do you know about E36? Well, I know it's E something, the, the three generations. How do you I know that? You before. You told me you got the, the one with the box flares, like the uh, 91. Yeah, yeah, it's the E30. Yeah. All right. So it's just shot in the dark. I know cars uh, pretty well. Ah, uh, the E36, not bad. Okay. All right, good time. Have a good night. All right. <laughs> I took a good guess. Sam? Hi. You're uh, 17? Yes, I am. What's happening? Um, I've been on birth control for six months, and I've gained oh, quite a bit of weight, but I'm getting off it, and I was wondering if I'm going to lose the weight when I get off Usually women lose it pretty quickly. All right. So just, you know, you obviously have to contain your... Your body will very often fight to maintain weight, I and mean, that's just the way our bodies are. So you may have to focus on your diet a little bit, but usually it's pretty easy to lose that weight. Usually. All right. Okay. okay. How much did you, did you gain? About 25 pounds. That's a pretty fair amount. How much do you weigh? did you weigh before? 120. All right. All right. So are you a tall person? or? No. All right. It, it should come off. Just be, be going to pay attention. All right. All right. Good times there, baby. Thanks. All right. Let's talk to Megan, who's uh, 15. Megan? Hi, you guys. Hey. Megan. Oh, I love you guys so much. <laughs> yeah. You want me to take your virginity in a few years? Oh, that sounds great. All right, I'll put Just you gotta down. Just got to wait for about three more years. Sounds good. Yeah. You know, let me tell you something. I don't want to discourage you, but all you 14, 15-year-old chicks talk a pretty good story about losing it at uh, 18. No, I'm waiting until I'm 25, though. So. 25? Hmm. 25. Yeah, hold on a second. Drew, it riddle me this. Yes. Every broad you talk to at uh, 14 is going to lose her virginity uh, when she gets married or at age, uh, uh, junior year of college. But yet the average age is like uh, 15 and 7 months. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Now, how does that work? You do the math. I think it's getting better, for one thing. It's getting older. What is the average amount of, like, let's say, I guess it's like the average amount of 14-year-old boys who say they're going to own their own uh, surf shop. <laughs> You know what I mean? Or be an astronaut. Or be an astronaut. I thought I was going to be a pirate at 14. Seriously, I'm still clinging to that. There's still time for that. You've mentioned it often. And, uh, and also, 14-year-old um, guys thinking they're going off to like a uh, Stanford yeah. or a Ivy League type college. What percentage of them actually go? I mean, like, even when I was in the ninth grade, I, and I'm partially retarded, I thought, no, I'll, get, I'll get my grades up around the 10th, 11th grade. I'll go off to some college one day. Uh, yeah, junior college. Megan? Yeah. All right, so uh, your parents are physically abusive? Yes, like, for no reason, I'll be talking to them, and they bring up some stupid subject that happened like two weeks earlier, mm -hmm. and they slap me, hit me with brushes, push me into things. Well, I mean, I get a new bruise every two weeks. Well, why don't you report this? Well, I mean, I've threatened with physical abuse, like calling child whatever. Protective but services. All they say is like, oh, if you do that, it just shows you don't love us. It's like, well, of course I love you. I mean, you're my parents, but... Yeah, well, you don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> What's their nationality? Um, I'm Caucasian. No, white people. 
Yeah. Hmm. And it's really weird because their family is really religious, but... Yeah, well, why don't you... Why? Don't, the average religious person does more beating than the average atheist. Yeah, I blame it on the fact that my dad's Catholic and he was probably molested when he was younger. <laughs> wow. Hey, good times, good times. Yeah, that's what I blame it on. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, <laughs> hmm, are you uh, physically um, imposing enough to be able to sort of stand up to them? Um... Yeah, I mean, I'm taller than my mom. I mean, I must admit that I have pushed her once, mm -hmm. but, you know, nothing too serious. And my dad just recently got um, peripheral neuropathy. Is he an alcoholic? He was alcoholic, yeah. like really heavy, and he's not diabetic or anything. So. Well, that's from alcohol, the peripheral neuropathy. What's yeah. that new, Drew? It's damage to the nerves in the periphery, particularly in your legs. Yeah. Well, what do you mean in the periphery? Out towards your, the tips of your fingers. And ah, it's a bit so bad. Toes and your fingers? Oh, your feet, basically. Oh, no. good. It's, oh, bad, good. it's bad times, and it means ah. bad alcoholism, too. Yeah, but he stopped drinking a while ago, so... Well, is he in the program? Um, no, he wasn't. He just quit on his yeah, own. Yeah, well, alcoholics that stop drinking can be horrible to be around. Yeah. They're depressed, they're irritable, they're rageful. They're, they're rageaholics oftentimes at that stage. So this is this is I'm not a good chocoholic thing. myself. I know. <laughs> <laughs> drop I'll tell you what, I'll tell you. I love that chocolate. Hey what Megan. You, yeah. So look, here's what you gotta do. You have to stay away from your parents until you go far, far away to some college. Well, that's and, one option. I mean that's that's well this is gonna be a mixed plan I'm gonna give All you. Right. You go to school, right? Yes, I do. You're not homeschooled or any of that nonsense? Oh, thank God, no. Oh. No. Now, you do anything at school? You play on the softball team or anything? Um, no, I'm kind of against the whole athletic thing. Yeah. You're against it. Right. You'd rather go yeah, home. I'm and against it. <laughs> rather go home and have your dad beat on you than to hang out and play a little softball? Well, no, actually, we go up to the rector and I work out most of the time. Huh. So. And, well, Why are you against the athletic thing? Because I'm kind of, to my view, mostly jocks do it, and I'm kind of against jocks and preps and all that stuff. Yeah. I'm kind of the punk person, so mm -hmm. I'm angry. angry. Beat on She's not? angry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm angry. I'm outraged. Sorry, yeah, you have your mom's been beating on you. What she expect? Yeah. yeah. I, I think you stand up to your parents. You, you don't let things escalate. You get out of there if they become threatening to you, and you call the authorities. That's it, period. Okay. You have a plan. You follow, you follow the plan. You tell them what the plan's going to be, and... You know, it, 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 it's in their hands. All right. And just please remember this. Uh, remember this little uh, morsel of advice I give you and all the angry kids out there as parents beat on them. When I run into you at the uh, rental car counter about six years from now, I'm not your dad. Don't right. give me a hard time. Right. Please, please. Don't make society pay. If you get molested, go kill the guy who molested you. And if you get beat on, go abuse the people who abused you. They get abused, and then they go out and abuse society. This is why the people that abuse them need to be abused by society. This is why when we get hold of these abusers, we need to beat the crap out of them as a society. Because remember, their product has been unleashed on us. Remember that girl last night that was so angry? She'd been physically abused? Right. Remember that one? Yeah. We, with the moment she opened her mouth, we picked up on it. You know, like these jackasses, I always think about this. Well, every... Every six months, some uh, kid with the name of Jesse James something goes on a rampage, and uh, they're tracking him. Oh, he was in Nevada last, and he's uh, moving toward Colorado. Any jackass that gives their kid the Jesse James name, I, I'm going right to the parents beating the crap out of them. Mm -hmm. You name your kid Jesse James, he's 19, he stole a car, he's killed a few few guys, and he's on the run. You, you surprised, you jackasses? Will? Yeah. Everyone should name their kids Seth so they come out pussies. That's <laughs> my plan. Seth, Seth. It's a mellow name. Will? Yeah. Yeah. Adam's a nice mellow name, too. Seth, oh, it's the perfect name. Seth. The God. Seth Adam. What's up, Will? Um, I find myself jumping from one crush to the next, and I'm wondering if this is just a normal stage or raging hormones, or is this something psychological happening? How long has it been going on for? Oh, from the, I would say, about the summer of 2000. Two years, since you were like 14 or so? Yeah. And that how often... My first and last girlfriend. How long do the crushes last for? Ooh, until I tell them and they say no. How long is that? Mm, four months. So you got three crushes a year. Until <laughs> he tells them and they say no. No, I think that's... He a, could have one crush a year if he didn't tell them. It's, I, or actually, he I could have like... The last one and 
not, now she's on a road trip to Florida. So. Not only do I think it's age appropriate, I think he's kind of ahead of the curve because most 16-year-olds obsess for about a year and then never ask and just switch to another crush. Right. Right. Yeah. right. He's actually giving it three or four months, getting up the nerve, asking him out. They reject him. He doesn't stay obsessed. That would be the abnormal part. Right. The abnormal right. part is where you stay in no matter what the reality is. You get on to your next thing. That's fine. I, I was just thinking about this as uh, Will was speaking about crush to crush. You know, when you get older, everyone sort of uh, settles in and finds somebody. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But at 16, and especially younger, 14, 15, it seemed to me like there was like one guy who wasn't dating 20 women, but he had like 20 chicks. And he was like, there was like the popular guy like in, in junior high. Mm hmm yeah, this funny. The funny thing about the alpha male is, as I recall in junior high, he wasn't a big kid. No. He wasn't a dominating kid. No. Just he was a kid. He was a cool kid. Yeah. And and oftentimes a little undersized, a little spindly, mm -hmm. but cool. He had he had his own vibe, you know. He had the right genes somehow. S whatever it is, the chick sniffed it out on him. Yeah. And this guy would go from chick to chick to chick, and always had like eight chicks in. So really, here's how it would work. If there were a hundred women and a hundred men, there would be five guys monopolizing the hundred women, and then the other ninety-five of us just sitting home beating off on a peachy folder. Do you know what I mean? Yep. You get a little bit older, and people just eventually give in and just start pairing off. Right. You know, it's like, all right, there's a hundred of you, there's a hundred of us. Look, I know I'm no prize. You got a fat ass. Let's just team up and have some ugly kids call to life. But people also but, look for they they, they go from trying to sniff out the genes to just having a relationship. Right. But at age 14, 15, 8th, 9th, 10th grade, there's like one or two guys that are really hoarding every woman. And even if they're not having sex with every woman, the women are holding out for them. Nah, it's like, no, nah, no. Nah. Later on, they start to, they realize they're no, they're no big prize. Yeah. And they lower their standards and they end up pairing off with people. Or they change but their standards. Yeah, they lower them. Uh -huh. <laughs> but at that age, I just could remember them. They're like, they're like, no, nah, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm yeah. waiting on, I'm waiting on Todd. I'm waiting for Todd. That guy's name was Todd Euler. It's like Chris. Todd. No, Chris didn't start hitting his uh, stride until uh, high school, really. A uh, little junior high, but Todd Euler. He was another friend of mine. Oh, he was so popular. He had a, uh, he had a, he had a custom shirt. And Todd was one of these guys. It was a complete mystery to me because uh, he would show up, you know, every summer. I wanted to strangle all these kids. Every summer, these everyone would show up back, you know, in the next grade when the fall came around. And they'd be wearing a shirt that said, like, Hawaii 79 on it. Uh -huh. or, or, you know, I went, to, you know, I think there was a lot of Yosemite shirts, like, go, go, go climb a mountain. Maui yeah. 1980, you know, would say on it. And uh, I'd have a uh, shirt that said... Uh, Van Nuys, 1964. No, like, they come up. So this guy, Todd, he skied everywhere. That was his thing. It's like, he, he went to Europe and skied, you oh, know. Okay. And it, it's like, and he had a shirt that said, Ski Oiler on it. It was like an airbrushed painting of him, you know, caricature of him skiing. I mean, th this is all it takes, by the way, to get your eighth grader laid, ladies and gentlemen. There's <laughs> one thing. You know, I'm wearing the tough skins with the reinforced knees and the fake earth shoes. And Todd's got the airbrush shirts. Todd Oiler. In a tuck ski, position. Ski Oiler, yeah. yeah. And he's going down the hill in his Ski Oiler shirt. And I'm sure this shirt must have cost his parents like $12. But w to, to my family, that thing was just, look, forget it. I, 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 I might as well said, look, I want to enter Evil Knievel's Rolls Royce in the Smash Up Derby. <laughs> It would, it, would, it, would have, it would have been fallen on the same ears. Yeah. Same possibility. Yeah. I would like to take a dirigible trip to Berlin. That was the same thing. It's getting like a shirt that had something written on it. Airbrush. I couldn't even get the goddamn swirly art at the fair. You know, it was like $3. You take the ketchup container full of the paint, and you squirt it on the, swir on the piece of very, paper that's spinning around. Very wasteful. No way. Very wasteful. Oh, my God. How dare you? No, no. It was just, that, was, that, was, that was crazy. What are you, what are you one of the uh, one of Rothschilds? Please. What, do you own a railroad? You don't do that. Just all that custom crap. All that stuff. You know, the, the uh, sketch artist stuff? 
You go to Disneyland, you sit there, they draw a picture of you on a skateboard with a girl chasing you and a heart bubble coming in. That stuff is like, you know, $7 or so. No, are you out of, it's out of, out of hand. $7. <laughs> Idiots. All right, let's uh, ski oiler. Right, we're going to take ourselves a little break, and uh, we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's uh, Loveline. I'm uh, Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Yeah. Yeah, spin art. <laughs> Way out of the reach of the Corollas. <laughs> I basically, I go to one of those fairs. I would just walk around, look around. Eh, look at that guy shooting a BB gun. That guy's trying to pitch a uh, hoop onto a Coke bottle. That guy's got the spin art over there. That guy's vying for a goldfish. Just take a look. I guess it was good enough just to be there. Jason? Yeah. You're 14? Yeah. You ever get any of that spin art? <laughs> uh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. yeah. Hello? Hello? You know what that spin art is? Uh, no. You ever been to a county fair or yeah. carnival? Yeah. You ever see when they put the paper on that spinning wheel and they squirt it with uh, paint? No. Never seen that? <coughs> Maybe it's no. not happening anymore. No computers now. I still think that stuff's around. I would think. All right, Jason, what's up? Oh, uh, yeah, about two weeks ago I had sex with a girl and uh, now I'm like, my penis and everything's all... It's it. Yeah. All right. Said so, use the S word there, uh, buddy, which is a uh, no, no. And that S word, that ain't spin. No. Uh, and I don't believe him. Not for a second. No. Sounds uh, sounds full of crap yeah. to me. No. And I don't like his attitude either. Didn't know what spin art was. How David. You David, you're 16. Uh, yeah. What's up? Um. Well, like. I lately have been, like, having trouble, like, talking to girls. Mm-hmm. Why? What happens? Oh, uh, I don't know. Like, in... I'm in, going to be in 10th grade now. But, like, in uh, 7th grade, like, I was, like, the pimp and everything, but, uh... 7th grade. But, uh, like, lately, it just... Did you have, like, an airbrush picture of yourself that you wore around? Ski oiler? Uh, no. no. Hey, uh, hey, hey, David? Yeah? You know the difference, uh, between, uh, veal and venison? Uh... What kind no. of animal is a veal? What kind of animal? I have no idea. No, uh, venison. no veal? Venison? What kind no, of you animal? don't know veal. You don't know venison. Venison's like deer meat or oh, something. See? Like uh-huh. Oh, well, he's calling from, from Boise. From Boise, Idaho. There you go. Probably eats a venison cereal in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> deer bits. <laughs> Frosted deer flakes. All right. That's like the only place I've ever had venison. Is it's got to be the only. It's got to be the only Wyoming. place where somebody knows what venison is, but doesn't know what veal is. Oh yeah. Well, you want to give a guess as to the kind of animal that veal comes from? Uh, I don't know, like a turkey or something. Turkey. Turkey. Good. Good times. All right. So uh, turkey meat, veal. I, yeah. I guess so. Uh, right. does, isn't turkey meat just kind of called turkey though? I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you would have to admit that turkey is just called turkey, though, right? Like well, tur yeah. turkey sandwich, turkey leg, right? Didn't we have right. some other questions for this? All right. Time? And what's an emu? Uh, it's like a big ostrich. Yeah. 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 All right, babe. Well, we had a fish we were asking Two about. Two for three. Now, ooh, now ooh. a lot of people guess veal was a fish. Oh, really? A lot of our listeners, yeah. So what is it, then? Veal? Yeah. That's a baby cow. Oh. Yeah. That's I think my dad's probably doing that once. <laughs> probably, yeah. All right, so... You're uh, you're having trouble talking to girls. Yeah, right? like if I'm like in a group of people I don't really know that well, and like, um, like if I don't feel like they want to talk to me, like I don't talk to them at all. Like I'll just go and like sit in the corner or something. But well, that's sort of most men males go through that phase, uh -huh. right? And they come out of it with varying degrees of success and with varying speed. So it's something you have to kind of get out there and practice and uh, manage because. Everyone has a certain amount of anxiety about being in new social situations, and particularly as the hormones turn on and the sort of stakes are up. And you know, and maybe it's a true social anxiety problem. I, I doubt it, but see, see if you can't sort of learn how to negotiate social situations. All right, let's talk to uh, Rebecca. Rebecca. Hi. Venison. What kind of animal? What kind of animal? Yeah. Um, a venison. Yes. Yes. I um, mean, what, what kind of meat? 
kind of. Glad Rebecca was listening carefully during the last call. Yes, what kind of meat? Well, that's that's really the beauty of our callers too. Is we can go ahead and like talk, talk about the answer mm. and then like ask the next one. A deer. She got right? it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and uh, mm -hmm. veal. Veal is a calf, a baby good, calf. Good, oh, go. good girl. And an emu. An emu is an ostrich. <laughs> All right. All right. And a marmoset. I'm sorry. Marmoset. Marmoset. I have no idea. Okay. That, you can excuse that one. That's good. That's fine. <laughs> we had another three one. for we, four. I swear not we had bad. A fish. We were. Part three. <laughs> go ahead, uh, Rebecca. Um. Well, my sister, she's 27 years old, and she's met this guy about she's only been with him for six or seven months and he is so controlling she has a son he's already hit her he is breaks the son, all her stuff who is the son with or who had was the son with um that's not his son I it's that. um somebody else's son from my sister yeah, but, <laughs> all right hold on a second let's uh do a love line reenactment here i'll be rebecca uh, yeah he uh he breaks her stuff he hits her he, she has a son. Who is the son with? It's not, not his son. I get that. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, it's my sister's son from somebody else. <laughs> That's with my sister. <laughs> with my sister. All right. Hey, Rebecca. Hello. Yeah. Where's the dad? The uh, biological dad. Oh, um, that bastard went back to England. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Interesting. It's he nice. was English. I see. That's why I went back to England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mexican guy wouldn't have made that move back to England, right? <laughs> would have right. gone back anyway. All right. And uh, Rebecca, now, are you doing okay? You don't have any kids? or? No, I don't have any kids. Um, Good. No. Right. Okay. Has she been in abusive relationships before? Yes, she has. It's, yeah. it's like a trail. And Is your dad abusive? Um, yes. He was an alcoholic. There you go. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't, he didn't hit us or anything. Well, he must have been kind of tough to deal with yeah. when your sister was, you know. Yes. And what's your deal? You big gal? N me? Yeah. Big? What do you mean big? Big, uh, portly? No, no. I'm skinny. Skinny? Yeah. You, uh, skinny, you not, le skinny, not fat. Not fat. You with, uh, you a lesbian? No. Okay. <laughs> why, are you, why are you picking this weird stuff? I think I get, we're getting normal from Rebecca. Yeah, you're normal, right? I'm normal. Yeah. I just have a deep voice. <laughs> no, no, I'm just curious. You have relationships? Everything doing okay? Um... Yes, um, I have friends, and <laughs> I, I um, go. I'm an actress, actually, so I'm struggling. Oh. <laughs> and um, I just care very much about my sister. I'm where, very close with her. Where does she uh, live? Nearby. She used to live with me. Yeah. Yeah, we used to be roommates. How does she support herself? He supports her. Oh boy, what's he do? Construction? No, he works for Paramount. Oh, yeah. son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Okay. Well, the, she confides in you. With yeah, this, she with tells this me stuff. all these things, and she won't leave him. And uh, he breaks her stuff. Yes, he, he broke her piano, her guitar. Is he an all alcoholic? CDs. Also? El Cabong syndrome. Is he, is he an alcoholic? I'm sorry? Is he an alcoholic also? No. No, he doesn't do anything like that. He doesn't drink, huh? And he spazzes out that yeah. way. No he's speed or anything? Maybe she, he's doing something she doesn't know no, about. No, no. He doesn't He doesn't do any drugs. Hmm. Nothing like that. Hmm. He's like a lighting person. Ooh. Like the mover people, you know, the people yeah, that... Yeah, it's like a gaffer. Rebecca, I'm just... It just doesn't fit that there wouldn't be a substance here. Your dad was an alcoholic. Every gaffer's high. Yeah. Every single one of them. Out of a hundred gaffers... 103 of them will be high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. I know this guy at first. I work so, with him. So if he's doing stimulants or something, uh, maybe that's why he's getting so erratic. What you might want to do with your sister, well, what you should do is either get her to somebody, a therapist, or maybe take her to some Al-Anon meetings or, or adult children of alcoholics, a ACA, something where she can really kind of work on this because this ain't going to change until she changes. Hey, do you remember? She needs this stuff the way it is. Or back in the day when you could... Uh, frequent way to kill somebody is to drop something on their head mm -hmm. like yeah, uh, every one of those uh safes e every third episode of vegas was uh someone was trying to kill wayne newton and there was always some uh some sketchy looking gaffer guy and he was walking around up on the catwalk above sandbags. the stage he was loosening the rope with yeah. the sandbag uh the chances of killing wayne newton with a sandbag got to be under 50 percent yeah. Probably high 40s, but still technically under 50. You got to line the guy up exactly with the sandbag or the lighting rig or whatever it is. They, uh, Dan Tana would always fly in and knock them out of the way at the last second, and the thing would crash to the ground. Yep. 
I guess today we smartened up. We figured we'd just put a bullet in someone's head. We want them gone, right? Mm -hmm. We don't cut the brake lines of the car. We don't loosen the sandbag anymore. I think there was a little more creative. Uh, the, the people who wrote for TV, and it was mm -hmm. like, yeah, well, sure, we could put a bullet in the guy's head, but then uh, the show would be over in 11 minutes. We'll drop something on their head. And he used to throw anvils out the windows and safes and pianos and stuff. Nobody gets anything dropped on their head anymore. And, and why were there enough people spending time on a stage who were potential murder objects that they would be there a sufficient period of time to have stuff dropping on them? Every yeah. episode of every... It was always some dicey series, guy backstage, yeah. yeah. And it always worked this way. The hero would be out in the audience, and he'd be enjoying the show, but if always keeping a uh, vigilance, you know, yeah. always take a, keeping a watchful eye out. And, uh, and he'd be looking around, and he'd be enjoying the show, and then he'd, he'd look up and he'd see what was going on. And he would start running for the stage, but people wouldn't know what he was doing. And he would hop up on stage. People were like, oh, man, what are you doing? You Stop know? him. And they'd tackle the guy and right. knock him down. And he'd knock him down and he'd be like, what the F? What are you tackling Wayne Newton? And then the thing would fall down. And then yes. it'd be like, oh. That's when the chick, if he tackled the chick, that's when she'd fall in love with him. <laughs> you tackled me. I could have had sand on my head, but you, <laughs> you stopped the sand. Travis? Hello? You're 17? Yeah. You, uh... You work at a Taco Bell? Yes, I do. Yeah. I no, applied at the... Uh, anymore, but yeah. What, what happened? happened? Well, what happened? Basically, my question is, I lost $23 in my till. I have no clue where it went. Yeah, out of your register, you mean? Yeah, on my register. Till. Same thing. But Oh, your till, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, my question is, I've never been in this situation before. You know, I'm only 17. I've only been really working three months. Need someone to vent to. I need late at night. I I need someone to give me some advice on what I should do. Why didn't you offer just to pay them back? I, I don't have the money to pay them back, and they wouldn't take it. They, that's not how their policy goes. What's their policy? It's basically you lost it. You lost it. You're screwed. You have to pay them back in imitation guacamole. <laughs> sour cream. That's the only way. Yeah, listen, you guys still use that sour cream dispenser that's in a caulking gun? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are. Yeah, I, I, I find that disconcerting. Yeah, so do I. Listen, anyone who's uh, in the upper management uh, department of Taco Bell or any fast food chain, I know it's efficient. You guys got to apply the secret sauce and you got to apply the uh, sour cream and everything via the caulking gun, but I don't want to see it from where I'm standing. Right. I'm, I'm constantly standing behind the counter looking ahead going, well, what's the guy going to do? Caulk his tub in? Ah, oh, it's going on my burrito. <laughs> the guy's putting the, the, the guy's putting the silicone caulk on my burrito. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, it's it puts it's off putting. Yeah, I start thinking. And it makes that ratcheting sound. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, and then what do they do? They just keep filling it up, and stuff's been in there for a week. And how do they clean that thing? And no, they just <laughs> pop a new cartridge in it, like it's caulking. Really? Mm. Yeah, caulking gun. It's just a gun, and then you mm. slap that plastic cartridge in it. But listen, we'll, we'll talk. Yeah, to I don't go for that. Listen, you want to know how bad my life is? Please on six. I uh, I applied for a job at the Taco Bell North Hollywood when I was uh, 16 by my high school. Turn down. Good time. Not accepted. Did Travis? Not accept. Yeah. So what do you need from us? I, I just need to know kind of, you know, what should I do in this situation? Because I've never been in this situation. Well, what I, can you no, do? Well, hold on. This is a bogus call. You've never been in. You're no, 17 no, years I, old. It's not a bogus call. I mean, you're 17 years old. You got you got S can from a Taco Bell. You think you, you're you not going to recover from that? Well, no. I know I'm going to recover, you know. I, I got, I, I know I'll recover, but. Pretty much, my question is: It's just how, how do I deal with the situation? Do I well, what is the situation? Well, you got fired. There's nothing to do. What situation? Well, I, I, I'm not fired yet. Then offer to I pay them to back. How, how can I? How can I fix the situation? You got a manager over there? Not, not at the moment. No. No She's manager. On what? She's on vacation. She's in Mexico looking for new recipes. So Pretty who much, who yeah. is enforcing this uh, policy? And it, Tons of different people that own stock. Of oh, Listen, no, oh, no. It Travis is bogus or high. His, his story's full of holes. Yeah. Let me ask him a couple of questions. Really? Tra Travis, yeah. Travis, 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 Travis. I want you to give me uh, the uh, Taco Bell menu. Go ahead. 
Okay, you got your chalupas, gorditas, taco, taco supreme, crunchy, soft. Mm-hmm. You got burritos, seven-layer burritos, fiesta burritos, supreme burritos, double burritos. I'm going to fart in a minute. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> double burritos. What about the bell beef first? Is that on there? No, it's not. And yeah. chorito? What? And Chirito. Yes, yeah, it's on there. Yeah, but see, me and Taco Bell parted ways, and not uh, amicably, by the way, when they pulled the Bell Beefer off the menu in 1978. That was the end of us. That was the end of the oh, love so of Travis. Yeah. But, Travis, I, I, we don't understand what... Uh, you just talk to your manager, be contrite, be apologetic, explain yourself, who, offer to Who pay figured back. out you were 23 bucks light on your register? Well, if, we have a, man, a shift manager. Every shift count everybody who's on the And, and he said you're time. fired? What? And he's, he or she said you're fired? No, no, but, you know, he's freaked out. I'm freaked out. Sure. It's devastating, $23. Yeah. Well, are you? Are you? They look at that as a huge amount to be. Are, are you? What do you? What do you get? Minimum wage over there? Yeah, I am. What's that? What, is that different in Oregon than it is in six Cal fifty? Yeah, six fifty. That's not too bad. All right. And how many hours a week are you working? Twelve, twenty. It, it all varies. And you're working the register. You're not. Uh, I'm not back online yet. You're not working the caulking gun back I'm working there. Working like front or drive through. Right. All I right. bet you'll solve this. Just relax. Just go over there and throw your man. Yeah. yeah. Be, don't be defensive. Do you, do you realize? Do you realize that I was uh, turned down from Taco Bell, which was hiring. Turned down. At sixteen, application denied. Huh. And. When I got the job at the uh, McDonald's uh, six months later, was uh, forbidden from uh, working the counter. It's, uh, yeah. I was a grill man yeah. all the way. They weren't going to let me get up there and fraternize with the public. Could be a PR problem. Wouldn't you think a guy like myself would be a, 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 just a beautiful marriage between me and the cash register and the public? I just imagine you at 16, 17 as not being the most colorful person. Are you kidding? I was a dynamite kid. How dare you? Yeah. Sweeping and mopping the outside area. Do you realize that was my job? You were depressed. Sweeping you and gotta mopping. Be, you gotta have a smile. Sweep and a mop. Give me a sweep and a mop of the dining area. Good times. Give me a sweep and a mop of the of the outside area. And I have 13-year-old kids hey, making remember, fun of me on their remember skateboards. Remember the 70s, no jobs. Remember that? No one can get a job. I forgot that I got turned job. down from the... How many white guys get turned down from Taco Bell? All right. I'll we'll take a little break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew. All right. Let's pile back to the phones here, Drewski. Let's help these kids. Melissa? Hi. You're 23. Yes. Yeah. Need a nice way to tell your boyfriend that you don't like receiving oral sex. Yes. Don't like receiving it. Yes. Yeah. I know it sounds weird, but I don't know. It just doesn't really do anything for me. And I'm pretty sure he enjoys it and he likes doing it. But I don't know. It's just, I, it just doesn't do anything for me. And if anything, it like kind of makes me not so much into the sex after that. Ooh, but you like intercourse. Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. The, the, this is this is that version of the female. The ones that easily orgasm during intercourse do not like oral sex. Hold on. Do you easily orgasm during intercourse? Like when he's in me. Yeah. Yeah. But when you know he's going down there, it's like okay, let's go. Like you we know. Had, we've had this call a number of times. Yeah, I guess so. It's like it, you, you, this isn't where you're getting your orgasm. So this is. Uh, I think. I think it's this a, is a crappy dinner salad that comes before the entree. Just I get through it. They find it ir irritating. Stupid cherry tomatoes. <laughs> no, no, it's not just... Who likes those cherry tomatoes? Like, I mean, from what I've read and what other girls say, I'm sure he has great technique and he's very attentive and creative and everything. Yeah, no, not your bag. But, yeah, it's just not in the bag. Well, listen, know you know what? Look, Melissa, yeah. this is exactly what you tell the guy. And believe me, uh, if a woman... Uh, told me this, I'd hand her an attache case filled with, like, unmarked bills and a thank you card. <laughs> It'd be the greatest thing ever, because in order to dodge this bullet and not feel like it had anything to do, like, I mean, if you just say to the guy, hey, listen, I dig having sex with you, man, and I get off on it, and you know the uh, oral sex? Not my bag. I, I don't know. It's like, as some people like certain dishes, certain people like certain music, and they don't like certain things. For me, that's a five. I will also predict that she's multi-orgasmic. Multi-orgasmic? Usually. Wow, wow. Usually. 
I don't even know what this guy's doing. He, he's, not, he's, doing he's doing nothing. This what? is just her. <laughs> I guess her. he's just very lucky. No, no. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what he's doing going down <laughs> on her. He's wasting all that valuable <laughs> well, orgasm time. He likes it. I no, don't he know. Doesn't. No, no, he doesn't. No, no. He just really? thinks. Yeah, yeah. He, he thinks just, you need that. He tells he likes it. Yeah. You know, like you just tell do I tell him while he's doing it? Or no, like, you just tell him, no. look. No. Say, look. For dinner or what? Does, does he yeah. know you have orgasms during sex? Huh? Does he know you have orgasms during oh, intercourse? Oh, my God, yeah. He always asks me, oh, so how many times last time? Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. So he's very interested in, in your, his performance with you. So you tell him that this, the oral part, not included. Do you like doing oral to him? Um... Not especially. I wish I could do it more often. Yeah. But he doesn't seem to like it too much. Well, he's busy collecting orgasms from Yeah. Yes, he doesn't I, like yeah. I don't trust either one of these. Don't have kids. Because <laughs> priority is going to be all, all over the map. He doesn't like that? I just are not, and Drew's not a big fan of that either. To, to me, I, this is, there's just nothing not to like about that oral. <laughs> nothing. And Drew's such a passionate man. You know what it is with you, Drew, is I think here's your problem. It's not that you're not a big fan of receiving oral sex. It's that you're such a passionate man and you're almost uh, primate-like in your <laughs> sex drive that if you're receiving oral, that means you can't be more than a couple of seconds away from intercourse. So let's get to that. Let's get to that. Kind of way I eat too, right? You eat. That's the way Drew eats. Yeah. He, he knocks uh, the garni off the side of the plate and he picks up the meat and he starts eating it. Never order an appetizer. No. And if he ever gets something with a bone, he sucks the marrow right out of it. Just he gnaws a hole in it with an incisor and he just yeah. vacuums the marrow right out of it. Here we go. All right. Go to break. All right. <laughs> everybody. We're uh, going to take ourselves a little uh, extendo break, probably about 22 hours, and uh, then we'll join you at 10 o'clock tomorrow night. What do you say there, Drew? Good oh, time. Tara's leaving. She, Tara don't come by Tara, goddammit, is going to France. Oh, oh, but coming back, yes? Oh, you okay. thought it was her last night. Yeah, yeah. No, she no, but, you know, because Tara, don't call my Tara, goddammit, said a couple nights ago, hey, uh, I'm leaving. Wednesday yeah. night's going to yeah. be my last night, and, and the way she phrased it, I right. thought, well, maybe she's... Yeah, I had the same thought, too. You know, I mean, we, we go through fo phone screeners uh, around here like uh, uh, KFC goes through sporks. <laughs> they turn them over pretty fast. Uh, that's, that, yeah. that's a spork. No, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a, 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 a combination of a, a spoon oh, and a sporks. fork. Yes, I've seen those. Yeah, they come yes, in little yes. KFC nice. was a good analogy because, you know, they do little cups of the beans. Well, the, and stuff. Right, right. It's good. Yeah, solid. A lot of guys would have had to think of that before the show, but uh, not Big A. I couldn't even follow you. Yeah. All right, so until next time, it's Adam Carolla for Dr. Spork saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.